Good morning everybody. So today we are going to have a go at creating some containers, drawing some containers like Andy Warhol did. He loved drawing soup cans. It's his favourite thing to eat. Apparently he had soup every day for lunch. Wow, imagine that, the same thing every day for lunch. Um, so we're going to be influenced by his idea of creating a normal everyday thing and drawing it a few times. So we're going to practice how to draw a container. If you were in the Zoom lesson um, yesterday on Wednesday, you did this with me already. So you've already had a head start. If you weren't there, don't worry because we're going to have another go. So by a container, I mean something like this. So it could be a tin. This is like a tin shape, a bit bigger, but has a circle shape at the top and the bottom, a cylinder. If you were thinking about drawing this, now I tilt it this way, you can see this shape. This is called an ellipse. It's like a squashed circle shape. And then the sides of my cylinder are straight lines. So when I'm drawing it, I'm thinking about this line here being curvy. And if you look at that curve, if I hold it still, you'll see that this curve is the same as this curve. So when we do our drawing, we need to make sure that this curve is the same as this one. We could draw it like this, we could draw it like this, we could even have a go at drawing it like this. This is another type of container. This is Marmite, I love to have this for breakfast. I actually have this for breakfast pretty much every day, a bit like Andy Warhol, but my breakfast is the same, not my lunch. Again, we have a circle at the top and this time we have curvy sides. So you can choose what shape you would like your container to be. Here are a few examples of things that I have drawn. If you were on Zoom, you would have seen these already, but containers where we have a curve at the top, a curve at the bottom, and then different shapes for the sides. So we're gonna practice this today, and then next week, we're gonna turn one of these drawings into an Andy Warhol style piece of pop art. And we will talk more about what pop art is next time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw that curvy line for the top. Then, because this container is straight, I'm gonna put two lines going straight down. I want to be careful that they finish at the same point. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this curve and I'm gonna do the same curve underneath. Simple. So I've got my curve at the top, my curve at the bottom, and my straight lines coming down. And now I'm gonna think about what I might want to draw coming out of this container. So it could be anything. I think I will do this as a type of plant with some leaves. So you can think about what you would like to draw in your container. It could be anything. You just need to think, is your container made out of glass? In which case, maybe you would see the stem of the plant in here. Or if it's not made out of glass, then you can only see what is coming out of the top of the container. So think of that carefully when you do your drawing. You can see here I'm drawing some leaves. Also think about when you're drawing something, is it in front or behind? of what you're drawing. Um, for example, this leaf's in front, so I don't draw that leaf going through it, I draw it behind it. Okay, let's put one more part of the plant here. It's coming up like that. It's behind this one. Draw the leaf here, it's coming up. This leaf is behind. We'll have one leaf at the end here, like that, okay. So there's my plant coming out of the container. To finish this off, I now need to show where the back of this is. So I'm just gonna draw a line that will come behind. This is called an ellipse. The shape that I have at the top of my container is called an ellipse, and that's what makes something look three-dimensional like this. Okay, that's my first container. I'm now gonna draw one that's a bit more like this shape. It's gonna be a bit shorter, so again, I'm going to draw that curvy line that's going to be at the top. Make sure you have the same curve on both sides. Okay, and then I'm going to, this time it's going to go straight down a little bit and then it's going to come around. And I have to try and match up. I have to try and make sure that the curve on this side is the same. That can be tricky. And then this container is going to have a little stand and then this curve here is going to be the same at the bottom so it's a bit like a vase 
And then I want to think about what could be in this container. It could be pens, pencils. Maybe this container is in my kitchen and it is containing lots of big spoons. So I've got a big spoon there. Maybe another spoon here. This could be one of those spoons that has holes in it. I've got some of those in my kitchen that you can drain the water out of. And like with my leaves, I need to think a little bit about what's behind and what's in front. So I think this time I'm going to draw like a spatula, but that's behind that spoon. And because it has a big flat part to it, quite a lot of that flat part is behind as well. And let's have one more wooden spoon coming this way. This line kind of shows where that spoon kind of goes in. Okay, so there's my spoons. And again, now I need to show the back of that. So I've got that ellipse shape. Okay. And then to finish my picture, I'm going to think about where are these pots? They're on a table. So I'm going to draw a line to show that they're on the table. And to make it even more realistic, I can put a shadow in. I'm imagining that the light, well, the light is coming from here, actually my spotlight's there. But I'm imagining, because this is three dimensional, that the light is coming from this side. So the shadow is going to be opposite the light. And same here, this one has a smaller shadow because it has a small base on the pot. I'll just neaten that up. Okay, so now I could add some other things to my picture if I want. Maybe I want to add something behind on the table. Maybe I want to have a go at doing some other containers. And then I can colour my picture in. So what I really want you to do is practice drawing different types of containers. Think of what could be in them and add some colour. And the next time we're going to use this principle of how to draw a container like Andy Warhol to create a more Andy Warhol style picture.